Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Intelman Scott Selections here for Wednesday, June 8th. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We had a nice winner in baseball with the Blue Jays minus one and a half at minus 120 on DraftKings. Really never in doubt, the Blue Jays led two to nothing for most of the game. Then the Royals bullpen came in and gave up a bunch of runs, and Toronto won uh, 7 0. Let's look for another winner here on Wednesday. And for the play that we're going to go to baseball once again, looking at the Yankees against the Twins. I like the Yankees, minus one and a half at minus 102 on FanDuel. Time recording of 9.20 a.m. Eastern time. Cumberton's why I like the Yankees in this spot. First of all, we know the Yankees have the best record in the league, and they've been playing amazing baseball recently, as the Yankees have won each of their last seven games. Meanwhile, Minnesota, not so much. After a very hot start, the Twins have cooled off a bit, as Minnesota has lost five of its last seven games. Now to look at the actual pitching matchup for this game, the Yankees have a pretty significant advantage. You have Nestor Cortez, on the mound, last five starts, 35 and one-third innings pitched, 1.27 ERA. Also, fun trivia question, you know which pitcher leads the entire league in ERA? The answer is Nestor Cortez with a 1.50 ERA. So Cortez is right now arguably the favorite to win the AL Cy Young, or at least in the top three, and I think he should fare well against Minnesota, especially since Minnesota's number one contact bat, Luis Arise, who is batting a league-leading 361 uh, batting average. He got injured in the middle of yesterday's game and left. So with the shoulder issue, I doubt he will be in the lineup. So Minnesota's offense should be even weaker against one of the best pitchers in the league so far this season. Now to look at who's pitching for Minnesota, you have Chris Archer, who's been okay so far this season, but he's really struggled at home. At home this season, 18 innings pitched five flat ERA. And another issue that he has is he really has not gone to length at all. He's pitched or started 10 times this season, and he's gone less than five and a third in each of those 10 starts, which means you're probably looking at Minnesota's bullpen for at least four innings, which can get a little bit rough at times. You know, the Yankees' bullpen is very solid. Minnesota's bullpen is in the bottom half. So even if Archer pitches relatively well, there's no guarantee Minnesota's bullpen is going to shut the door. And I think the Yankees should eventually score at least five runs in this game, which should be enough in order to cash this run line. But if you want to go through some trends, the Yankees have dominated the Twins for, to be honest, the last 20 years. But if you want to go for the last couple of years, the Yankees are 70 and 22 straight up in the last 92 meetings. So the Twins have really been owned by the Yankees in recent years. I expect that to happen once again. But if you're going to give me the Yankees, who have the best record in the league, a team that's won seven in a row and has one of the best pitchers in the league right now based on recent form on the mound against Chris Archer. You're going to give me minus 102 for minus one and a half with a guaranteed nine at-bats for the road team. I'm going to have to take that. This line should be closer to minus 120 in my opinion, but I'll take the Yankees here to get the job done and to win this game pretty handily. So play that once again here for Wednesday, June 8th. It's going to be on the Yankees, minus one and a half and minus 102 on FanDuel. Bye, everyone.